Beloved in the Lord, let us give thanks to him and come to him together in prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our good shepherd, that you have given your life for your sheep, and that you have, by that sacrifice, paid the price that we might be with you forever. We thank you, Lord, that you did not only die, but that you rose from the grave, so that we too may rise with you. Until that day comes, Lord, may we walk each day as faithful sheep, faithful faithful sheep of your fold, honoring you and obeying you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a Sunday that's probably, as, uh, as you think about, you know that it comes all every year. In fact, it's in all three of our uh, pericopes. But more than that, you know that image of Good Shepherd. And who doesn't? Even people outside of the church know that image of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And what, a, what an image it is, isn't it? It's an image that reassures us. It's an image that comforts us. And I imagine even if you don't know the rest of Psalm 23, you at least know those words, the Lord is my shepherd. What a beautiful message that is for us to hear. What a comforting message. And as you picture, as you picture the Lord our shepherd, what comes to your mind? Do you picture the shepherd with his sheep as he has one thrown over his shoulders as He's gone out and he's brought that one who got away back to the 99. Or do you picture him down on the ground and he's got him right there, picking him up? Or do you picture the shepherd who's leading his sheep as they come along the path, making sure none get lost or wander away? I imagine even if I didn't mention one of the pictures that comes to your mind, you you have a picture of the good shepherd in your mind. But I suspect for just a moment there might be a minor detail that we need to adjust in that picture. When you picture the good shepherd, what do the sheep look like? Are the sheep fluffy and white? Do they look like they've never spent a day in the field? Look like they have a regular shower or bath? If they do, well, then you might need to adjust your picture just a little bit. And I mean no insult by this, but just think about it for just a moment. Who did Jesus come for? Who did the good shepherd enter the pen for? It was each of us. And when he came, he came for sheep who were not clean, for the filthy, the dirty, the stinky sheep. And if you, even if you've ever only been to a petting zoo, you know how stinky sheep can be and how dirty they can get. And that's exactly who Jesus came for. He came for us stinky sheep. He came and he did not just stay on his throne on high looking down on us and passing judgment, but he came down right and got down right among us, right among his people. Even as he came to this earth, he didn't just preach from the tabernacle, shouting at the people as the Pharisees and Sadducees, but he came right to the streets, to the poor, the disenfranchised, to the sick, to the demon-possessed, the tax collector. He came to them. Those who society considered more filthy than any other. That's who our shepherd is. He's a shepherd who smells like his sheep. Because a good shepherd, he has to smell like his sheep. Because he has to spend time with his sheep. He has to get right down into those crevices. He has to be right among them, even in the worst of times and in the best of times. And so a good shepherd smells like his sheep. He probably gets a little muddy, too. He gets a little dirt stains on him. But that's one of the beautiful things about our Savior is he was willing to do that because he cares and loves for us. And that is who he calls to be his shepherds. He calls shepherds who are meant to get smelly like the sheep, who are meant to get dirty with the sheep, who are meant to be among the sheep. A good shepherd is not one who sits on a platitude in front of the people, shouting at them, telling about them what they've done wrong. But a good shepherd is one who gets down with his people, who scoops scoops them up, just like as the good shepherd did. See, a good shepherd, it's not an accident that we use that word pastor. Because that word pastor, it's actually a Latin word for shepherd, or quite literally, interestingly, is to feed or to tend. And isn't that the exact job of a pastor? To feed and to tend. To care for the people of God. To look after them. To get down among them. To bind up the wounds. Jesus didn't just come to the people and give them the message of the gospel, but he gave it to them in a very real way. 
He brought healing to them and strength to them. And not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. A good shepherd who follows in the steps of Jesus. He may not always have the right words to say, but as long as he is faithful to the word, he shares those words. Those words of healing that the Spirit brings to peace. A good shepherd, like the good shepherd, knows each of his sheep by name. The good shepherd, he knows you so well. He knows the count of hairs on your head or or the lack of hairs. He knows the amount of cells in your body. He knows exactly who you are. A good shepherd, he knows who you are. He spends time with you. He gets to know the problems that you have. He gets to know the joys that you have so he can celebrate too. But more than anything else, a good shepherd, he loves his people. The good shepherd, he loved his people more than anything else. More than anything else in all the world, he loved his people. And so he gave his life for his people. Jesus gave his life out of gracious love for you. A good shepherd, a faithful shepherd, willingly gives his life for his people. Faithfully gives of his life, his time, his energy for his people out of love. So often in our world today, we have this marred picture of what the shepherd is meant to be. We have this marred picture because so often we see where the shepherds have been drugged through the news, through the filth and the dirt, who have lost their calling, who have done things that, well, they shouldn't be doing. And so often we've lost trust in our shepherds, those who God has appointed. And sometimes it makes it hard to trust the shepherd, the good shepherd. We go through this life and we know Psalm 23, many of us by heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, but, but Lord, I do want. I do want. How many of you can say that maybe it's, the, maybe it's a financial thing, maybe it's the, th- the, the fact that you don't move around as well as you did at 50 or 40. Maybe it's that you, that you don't see as well as you once did or hear as well as you once did. Lord, we do want. I shall not want. Wait a minute. He leads me to green pastures, to quiet waters. My life is chaotic. I didn't need this past week, this week full of news about what happened in Boston to make things more chaotic, and I doubt that you did either. Green pastures, quiet waters. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me besides green pastures to to green pastures besides quiet waters. Even as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, sometimes... We don't see the good shepherd with us. Instead of coming out of our depressions and our fears and our pains, they grow deeper and more overwhelming. And we don't want a table in front of our enemies because we'd rather our Savior just crush those enemies under his foot. It's so hard in this world we live in to know the good shepherd, to know what it means to be his sheep and to be reminded that even even as his sheep, He is still with us. He is still our good shepherd. Even with the sheep of his pasture, who many times we have turned our back on him, heard those voices of the wolves, trusted those luring voices of the world, he still comes after you. Even if 99 of you are sitting here, he goes after that one to bring them back. Even if you're that one who wanders off, Because we are his sheep. We are those whom he has loved, who he loves, who he loves with everlasting love. We are his sheep, who he has shown compassion to despite our undeserving nature. And we're reminded that even those who shepherd the sheep, that they too are sheep. I don't stand before you as though I'm better than you in any way, shape, or form. I don't stand before you telling you that I am not a sinner as well, because I am. And many of you know, because I've had to apologize before, that we as sheep need to forgive one another. But thanks be to God, we have that example of the Good Shepherd, who has time and again forgiven us, who has time and again forgiven our sins. Thanks be to God, we have Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has freed us from our sins. Now, that doesn't mean that we are free in this world, that things in this world will go well, but... Let me read to you again from Revelation chapter 7. I encourage you to turn in your bulletins. It's uh, just the last few verses here. But let's read those verses again because I think that this, 
This is God's promise to us even as we go through the, the trials of this life. This is starting verse 15, and I apologize, I have the NIV here. But Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that is the promise of our Savior. It is not a freedom of this life, but it is freedom that when we join Him, that we will be free from pain and suffering. We will be free from fear and tears. We will be free to be with Him and to worship Him and to shout His praises because He became the Lamb who was slain for us. Because He took our place. Because He became that Lamb upon the cross so that we would be with Him forever. Now this has implications for our life today though too. Because those, call, those commands that God has given to His shepherd they're not merely meant for the shepherd, but they are meant for the people as well. We are meant to lift one another up and care for one another when we are down. We are meant to forgive one another even when it doesn't seem like we're able to. We are meant to help bind up each other's wounds, to care, to share, to know that we are all sheep of the same flock. And I know that it can be hard in this world because sometimes the sheep in the flock that are around us, we don't care for them. Sometimes the sheep in the flock around us, maybe they're not exactly like we are. They don't talk like we do or they don't act like we do. But God has not shown His love only to those who are like Him. He didn't show His love only to those who were faithful. Instead, as the sick needed the doctor, He came to each person and God has called us as His sheep to be those who also are shepherds to be those who also lead others to him lead others to that promise of salvation lead others to that freedom so that they too may know that jesus christ will wipe away every tear from their eyes that jesus will free them from every pain that there will no longer be hunger or thirst but they will have those living waters and that is our job as sheep to also be shepherds. To shepherd the lost and the dying. To the love of our Savior. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we know that too often in this life that we fail. Too often in this life that it's hard for us to see or see, see what it means to, for you to be our good shepherd. Open our eyes and open our hearts to follow your paths that we may know that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days in our life and that one day we will dwell in your house forever. Give us that reassurance and give us that promise so that even in the midst of these trials we may proclaim boldly that we are your sons and daughters and that we may know with gladness that you have become the Lamb, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood has set us free. So that even as we, chief of sinners, may join you forever. Lord, we pray that you would inspire our hearts to proclaim the good news that because you have risen, we too shall rise. In Jesus, our good shepherd's name we pray. Amen.